Okay, thank you Comstock and thanks everyone for being here today. I'm gonna to go ahead and introduce our speakers who just happen to be two of my dearest colleagues. So we're so happy to have them with us. Um, Anna Nietrauer, who is joining us over Zoom is the digital initiatives librarian for the J. Willard Marriott Library and a former Digital Matters faculty fellow. Rachel Whitman, who is with us in person today is the digital curation librarian at the J. Willard Marriott Library and a treasured member of our Digital Matters community. Both Rachel and Anna have extensive experience in building digital collections, working with metadata, mapping, copyright, and creating online exhibits. We're so excited they can be here with us to share their extensive knowledge and to help get us off the ground in building our own digital exhibits in Omeka S. With that, I'm gonna turn the time over to Anna and Rachel. Okay, great. Can everybody hear me okay? Yay. All right. For that introduction, Rebecca, and we'll go over um, how to create digital exhibits with Omeka S. Um, just due to this being a hybrid uh, workshop, it's going to be maybe slightly less interactive um, than, than we would normally do, but we should have plenty of time for people to experiment and play around with our Omeka training site um, towards the end of the workshop. Feel free to put your questions um, in the chat, and uh, we'll just go ahead and get started. So what we're going to cover today, um, I'm going to do more of an overview of what is Omeka, why should you care about it, uh, different options for hosting it, um, thoughts about working with students on digital exhibits. We're going to go over a little bit of um, the interface dashboard and functions that you'll be able to try out um, yourself. Um, some principles for putting a digital exhibit or site together. And then we'll also have um, a good amount of time for some hands-on practice in answering any specific questions that you might have. So if you um, provided your email in advance of the workshop, you got an email from me. Um, and there's a few links in that email and I'll just kind of explain what you got. Um, I set up a GitLab repository with these slides and also some activity materials. So if you have a few um, images or other forms of uh, digital media that you want to use to create your own website, you can feel free to use those. Um, if you just want a set of four or five images um, to play around with, I have multiple sets of um, ideas for exhibit pages on that GitLab repository. Um, you also have gotten an email with a login, which I hope you were able to log in and set that up um, for our training site. This site will be active for around a week after the workshop, and then it's going to be disabled. So if you want to spend a little bit of time after the workshop um, familiarizing yourself um, with the software, feel free to do that, but just be aware that it will one day um, vanish in a poof of smoke um, once Brian, our, our helpful IT person, uh, disables it for us. And then Rachel also put together a really extensive LibGuide uh, training site all about using Omeka S. So a lot of the things that we're covering in the workshop today are also available on that LibGuide. Um, so that's just another resource for you moving forward um, if you're wanting to dig into this a little bit more. So um, what does a digital exhibit look like? Um, I always like to use um, my favorite uh, digital exhibit, um, which is one that uh, library partnered on with um, Professor Paul Reeve from the history department, um, Century of Black Mormons. This is a large scale comp complex public history project um, with a lot of customizations geared specifically uh, towards Professor Reeves scholarship. We also have um, some shorter um, sort of more brochure like digital exhibits on our platform um, where we're showcasing some regional and historical topics highlighting things um, from Marriott Library Special Collections and the Digital Library. Um, even more, um, one example of a digital exhibit that was completed by an undergraduate class is the Women in STEM digital exhibit, which was uh, produced by a class who went out and collected um, 
oral histories from women scientists and then created a digital exhibit addressing some of those themes. Um, another example of a digital exhibit um, with undergraduate involvement is our flu pandemic in Utah exhibit where our undergraduate student workers set up a timeline um, tracking dates uh, dealing with the spread of the Spanish flu in Utah. So just to give you an idea that you can really um, build these covering a wide variety of topics and for a wide variety of purposes, whether it's a person's individual scholarship, um, showcasing things that might be in your collection or a partnership with a class. If you're wanting to see uh, what other sites are out there, um, Omeka S has a directory of a variety of sites. And if you're wanting to check out um, what people have done at a variety of institutions, I really recommend um, visiting that site for even more um, inspiration. And what's handy is that they'll also give you a little bit of information about um, some of the customizations and bells and whistles that have gone into creating these uh, digital exhibits. So one thing that can be really confusing for folks um, is that there's two versions of the Omeka the software. Um, there's Omeka Classic and then there's Omeka S. Um, and we're obviously covering Omeka S today, but just to, to sort of compare and contrast, um, Omeka Classic um, is an older version of it. It's is available for some cloud hosting on omeka.net for free with some limited features and themes for free accounts. You can also host this on your own server. Um, what we're using and what um, the Marriott Library chose to get into from the start is um, Omeka S, which is the latest version of the software, it's sort of been completely re-architected um, in the back end, so sort of different technical infrastructure. You need to host this on your own server. So there's no kind of easy cloud-based solution that you can just sign up for. Um, it has a WordPress-inspired interface if anybody's been into blogging. Um, I find it a little bit more intuitive to use. So if you want to do this your, on your own, um, or if you want to partner with folks here at the library, if you're part of the University of Utah community and your items are really focused on Marriott Library Special Collections or things that might be in the digital library, um, you can talk to Rachel about partnering with Digital Library Services on a project. If your project is more centered on digital pedagogy, digital humanities, uh, digital scholarship, you can partner with Rebecca and uh, the Digital Matters Lab, and they can help get you set up with your website. And here's an example of a Digital Matters project, um, the Youth Activist Art Archive, which is it's all of it's hosted on the same um, instance of Omeka. Um, another version is to host it yourself. Um, I haven't used this, but I've heard that a company called Reclaim Hosting has an easy install option set up for Omeka S if you're going to pay for your own website. At one point, I have heard a rumor that University of Utah IT might support this. I have not verified this, um, but that's another group you can certainly check in with um, if you're curious about um, getting into building digital exhibits or digital scholarship projects. So we've, we've been using um, Omeka S for digital exhibits for a while, and we've also been uh, dropping in and working with um, undergraduate digital humanities, public history classes. And so I'm gonna uh, take just a moment to get on my soapbox about what you're asking of undergraduate students when you, when you are thinking, um, it's a good idea to do uh, a digital exhibit, which it is a good idea. Um, but I think it's it's good to be aware of everything that you're asking a student to do and how much time it's going to take for them to be really comfortable. Um, so essentially, they need to select and research a topic, find and curate information um, that might be photos, primary source documents, they need to be aware of some of the copyright issues that they might be encountering um, when they're finding 
other resources online to include in their exhibit. They need to be aware of the best practices for citing online content um, and also just uploading any of their own content um, to the web. Um, when you're uploading things to a website, um, one of the strengths of Omeka is that it's really built for folks in libraries and museums, which means that it assumes that you're going to want to be uploading images with some accompanying description or metadata. So you're not just embedding a photo, you're embedding a photo with um, a title of the photo, the date of the photo, um, other information that makes that photo um, findable um, and accessible. Um, you're understanding how to use a content management system or web publishing platform. Basic HTML certainly helps. Um, having some sense of how to write for the web um, is also useful. And then you're also, if you want to, you can add some bells and whistles like data visualizations, embedding timelines and maps. So I really think if you're going to use it in the classroom, it's it's best um, approached with a sort of capstone project and a scaffolding approach where students are, you know, spending um, a few hours for several weeks getting comfortable with these concepts and these uh, new skills. Because um, even though um, people talk about students being digital natives, a lot of these are kind of old school web publishing skills that people might not be aware of. Any questions so far? I'm going to keep on going. A um, couple things Omeka S isn't. It's not a replacement for a large scale digital library repository um, like the Marriott Libraries uh, digital library. It's not a digital preservation solution. It is not forever. So um, we'll do our best at the library to keep our exhibits up for as long as possible. But like anything on the web, you know, things can change or become out of date. So just keep that in mind. Um, one thing that I found really helpful when I was first starting to get into digital exhibits is to think of um, the information in them kind of like uh, content blocks or Lego bricks. Um, so you need content or text, but you also need the things that go along with your text. So that might be a photo, it might be um, a text, PDF, newspaper, video, multimedia, sound, um, different types of digital objects that you can upload for your exhibit. And um, the outline that I think is, is really kind of handy is to think of a digital exhibit as having four to five pages, one to three paragraphs of text per page, and four to five visual elements per page. And there could always be exceptions to this, but um, when you haven't done this before, I think it helps just to have um, this kind of idea in the back of your mind when you're thinking about developing something. Um, so just to talk a little bit about writing for the web, since we are essentially setting up websites uh, when we build digital exhibits, um, think a little bit about your audience and um, how they might be approaching your site. Um, some of the digital exhibits that the library has um, are sort of designed to be like pretty casual. Um, we're not having a ton of text in there. Um, Century of Black Mormons has long biographical essays because it just has a different goal for, um, for its audience. Um, so think of ways to be concise, break up your content, use the active voice, uh, assume that people are going to be scanning your content um, and write accordingly. And what you'll see in a little bit um, when Rachel does her demo is that Omeka S supports creating content blocks, which really helps with developing small sections of a uh, web page and then breaking it up with different visual elements. I'm gonna go through this real quick and then Rachel will go through it um, again and then you'll have some time to practice yourself. So when you log in to a busy digital exhibit site, you would see something like this. This is the Marriott Libraries um, exhibit site where you can see that we have really a shared authoring environment where we have multiple 
sites set up for digital exhibits. We have multiple items, resource templates and vocabularies. And I'm gonna go over those really quick in just a little bit. So items, as I mentioned, it could be a sound, it could be an image. Here we can see um, some folks recently have been uploading both images and a lot of sound clips. And these are the kind of little pieces of things that um, can then go into your digital exhibit site. Um, you can create buckets for your items and that's item sets. And so this is really handy because um, this is very much a shared environment like I was mentioning. So you can see here, Rachel has a project where she's working on images of matchbooks. And we probably don't want to mingle that in with um, Jessica's Mining in the West curricula. So you can create multiple collections. You can have a website and you can have um, multiple uh, collections that feed into it. So if you'll notice, Professor Reeve has um, sliced and diced some of his items according to specific criteria, like was this person baptized internationally? Um, or was this person baptized in Utah because he wants to be able to visualize um, those individuals in different ways. We also have um, the option to create customized resource templates for items. And I don't think we're going to spend a ton of time on this, but just want to let you know that that's available. So if you have um, a scholarship project with very specific data structure needs, there's usually a way to um, support that in Omeka S. Just as an example, um, I've put up two resource templates here. You can see on one side, the one for digital exhibits item um, looks very librarian-y um, because it has things like title, creator, date, rights, subject, relation, description, um, sort of your classic Dublin Core metadata fields for anyone who's a huge fan of Dublin Core. Um, I certainly am. And then um, Century of Black Mormons, though, it has fields that are really geared um, towards this historical scholarship project. So Dublin Core was not a good match for this project. And so we worked together to come up with a template that um, had fields like birthplace, death place, uh, name, gender, confirmation, slave at baptism, faith transition, and priesthood. And that was what um, Professor Reeve needed for his um, public digital history project. So um, it can be a little bit tricky to set this up, but so far I think we've been pretty successful in developing um, customized templates for folks when they have um, a specific need with their scholarship. And now I'm gonna stop and I think uh, Rachel's gonna go ahead and do more of a live demo of adding items to Omeka. And then you guys can um, try this out on your own. Okay, um, can everyone see my screen all right? Okay, I'm going to hide controls. Okay, so Anna sent out the email um, with the link to the training exhibit and set everybody up who had registered for the workshop with um, access. So just want to make sure everyone was able to successfully log in or if there was any issues with logging in. Definitely put it in the chat and someone will help you because <laughs> I can't see it. <laughs> um, so we're gonna go ahead and log in and I'm gonna take you through the very basic steps of how to get started on creating your exhibit site. Um, and again, this is just very basic stuff. Um, there's probably a lot different ways to do things and more capabilities within Omeka S, but this is just to get you started. Um, so when you log in, as Anna said, you'll have a dashboard where you can see, um, you know, the sites and resources that are currently being tracked. Um, I typically use the pane over on the left here to navigate in and out of different 
um, sections of the exhibit site. And before you get started, and I'm sure you would do this anyways, but I, I recommend getting like at least an outline and some, you know, work together before you just start diving into, you know, creating an exhibit. But today, feel free to like go ahead and start your own site. I think we also created, let's see here, I'm going to click on my sites tab. Um, I don't know what you all can see, but there might be a practice site if you want to go ahead and start playing around in there while I'm giving this little brief demo, feel free. Um, so to get started, you want to create a site and it should be very um, intuitive up on the upper right hand side, it says add new site. Um, so I'm just going to create one here. And you can not do <laughs> demo. Um, if your URL mattered to you, you could customize, you know, the URL, you can add a summary there, which I usually don't. Um, for the theme, oh my goodness, the, the Marriott Library default theme is here now. Uh, I don't know if I should click that. Um, I'm going to, before it was just one, so I was going to do it on the bare bones Omeka out of the box theme. This is basically um, how you can change the style and layout of your exhibit. So you could change your, you know, the layout, colors, um, fonts, based on what type of theme that you select. So I'm going to hit add for this one for the live demo, but I'm actually going to take you back to another set, site that I already created because I needed to do a little legwork. So let's pretend I just created animals in the archive. That's going to be our demo for today. Um, I'm going to go down and look at this tab here where I can actually now change this to the Marriott Library default theme. And that's the one that if you are working, you know, you're a Marriott Library um, user, this is the theme that you most likely be working with because it's amazing. And Leah's done a lot of work on it. So um, to get started, I would follow these tabs over here on the left hand side and the site admin it's really if you wanted to change the title change the url of your exhibit there's some really under the hood mechanics here i'm not going to get into uh right now that you can do in terms of changing um, some controls on the back end um, for a page um you can add pages to your exhibit here like anna mentioned having four or five different pages and these are essentially sections uh, within the website. Let's take a look at cats, which I've already made. I just want to give you a preview of what a page will look like on the back end and then what it'll look like on the front end. So on the back here, you can basically see the different building blocks in the center where it says media embed, um, HTML, another media item. So I'm going really fast, more HTML. And I created this already, but in order to do that, you use these blocks here on the right. And I'll take you through like the top three ones or four that you'll be using. But this is what you know page looks like on the back end. And then on the front end, it, you know, this is essentially what that'll look like. So you have your blocks of images and texts, and depending on how you align them, which I'll get into. And then we can have a row of images and even a PDF item. This isn't a pretty page. I will be the first to admit that, but these are just some of the essential steps that you'll need to get started. So I'm going to go back to my pages here and I'm going to add a new page for dogs. And create my URL. Click add and let's say um, I want to add some text and here's a big warning about Omeka S. I don't re recommend doing any creative writing in these text boxes. I recommend doing that in a different document and then copying and pasting it into your HTML block because when Omeka is open for an extended period of time, maybe like a half an hour or so, and then you click save, you might get kicked an error message. And I have lost work. I know other people have lost work in terms of, you know, just freestyle writing in here is a, is a dangerous slippery slope. That's all I'm going to say. So I have already generated some doggo ipsum. And let's say this is my creative writing. So I'm going to go ahead and paste it in here. And you can see there's a pop-up 
um, menu here. So you can do some customization. You can add hyperlinks. Um, you can do some different heading styles. So if I wanted to do a section here on Terriers, um, heading two, you can do different sizes, very similar to what you would use with Word documents. Um, and then if you wanted to get into the HTML markup, if you feel comfortable doing that, you can click on that source tab and just, you know, go to town here with various, um, you know, iframes. If you wanted to embed an iframe, um, other sort of HTML shortcuts there. So let's say I wanted to add an image, but I hadn't already gotten started yet. So I'm going to go ahead and click save. Another thing you want to click save a lot, like it's the early 2000s, nothing is going to save for you if you don't click the save button. So that's definitely um, something to get used to. I'm going to click view real quick so you can see that we're building our page. So the text is on there. So to get media added to the site, let's go to our item sets because we'll actually want to create an item set like Anna said it's the bucket. It's a way to group media items together and then assign that bucket to your exhibit site and it just makes it a lot easier to add items. Um, this is our training instance. There's not much here, but as you kind of saw a preview, I, there are thousands of items currently in the Marriott Libraries instance of Omeka S, so it can be a lot to navigate. Um, so to add a new item set, it's super simple. You just click the button on the upper right saying add new item set. I've already added the one we're going to work with, but I'll just um, make one for show here. Digital exhibit, exhibits item is the resource template that I recommend that we actually kind of copied over from our um, library instance. And this is the real Dublin core based one. It's very bare bones. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just create a title for the item set. And click save. And let's pretend that I just made the animals in the archive item set because we're going to go back here. <laughs> um, so this is really the one we're going to be working with. And if you have, you're welcome to play around with this and um, use it in your exhibits if you want to play around. I've added a mix of media, of basically images and a couple um, PDF documents that we can play around with. Um, but I want to add a new item. So I'll show you up here. You just click add a new item on the always on the upper right hand corner. Um, I'm going to select the digital exhibits item because that's the metadata template that we're working with for my exhibit. Um, let's say I have an image in mind that I want to use and it's in the digital library. Because we often use things from the digital library and here it is. So let's pretend I've already downloaded this and have it saved on my computer. Um, so I'm going to do some metadata really quickly. And the amount of metadata that you use will really depend on your project, your exhibit needs. Obviously, us in the Digital Library Service Department are very keen on including as much metadata as we possibly can. So if it's there, we typically include it. If you have don't have it, it's not going to appear on your record. So don't worry about a bunch of blank fields that will show up. Um, in terms of what we recommend, we really recommend you at least have a title. Um, if a, a date, a creator of an item, um, I'm just making this up. So don't hold me to the fire here. Um, and then also linking to the item if it has been published somewhere else on the internet and that's where you got the item from. And that way, users of the exhibit can essentially browse other resources. You're also giving provenance to that item. Um, and also, like for us, we have very robust metadata listed in our digital library um, that we can point people to in case we have a very you know, succinct, abbreviated list of metadata items in our digital exhibit. So I'm going to take the record um, URL. I'm going to click URI because I basically want to create a hyperlink in my record that just says view 
in digital library. So that means when they look at the metadata record, they'll just see the hyperlinked view in digital library. I strongly recommend a write statement, even if it is one of the common uh, write statements you'll find in our digital library, which is copyright not evaluated, but at least that will put um, you know, the onus on the potential reuser to investigate further. Okay. So that's the first step is doing the metadata and we're working through the tabs up here that you can see. So values and next I'll go to media and I'm gonna upload, choose the file on my computer. Oh, nice, here we are. Twin girls and twin dogs. And then just one more tab, we're gonna do the item sets and I'm gonna go ahead and add it to animals in the archive. And the first three are really the most important values, media and item sets. The one sites advanced in mapping, I haven't really dabbled with a whole bunch, so they're not quite necessary at this point. Um, okay, so we've added our item. Let's go back to our site. And we need to make sure that our item set is actually added to our exhibit site. So go, you would go to your resources tab, um, go to item sets, add animals in the archive and click save. So you'll need to make sure that the item set under your resources tab is assigned to your exhibit in order for things to work right. So let's go back to dogs. Okay, so. Now I'm ready to add some media. So let's pretend I uploaded 20 items or so. Um, the three most commonly used building blocks on the right, again, are the HTML, so that's your text. Item showcase will add, you can add a row of media. Through the media embed, you can add um, an individual image and make it quite large. And you can left align, center it, or right align. And then there's something called the universal viewer that is um, a really nifty interface front ends and you can zoom in on items and you can also move through pages of a PDF document really nicely. So I recommend Universal Viewer for PDF documents and also for high resolution images that you would want the user to zoom in on from the front end of your exhibit site. So let's go ahead and add some media to these three just so you can see how it works. You'd click add attachment I'm gonna add my twin girls and always and hit apply changes. So you can see it appears over here, but let's say I wanna do a row of like um, a couple items here. Add that. And then I'm gonna add another one. So I'll have a row of three. Um, dogs on snowmobiles, sounds good. <laughs> So I've added that and I've clicked save and then we'll go ahead and view it for a preview. You can always preview what you're working on. It looks like two of them are on there. I don't know what happened to the third. I must have not missed a final step here. And you can keyword search. Like I know I saw dogs and snowmobiles. If I spelled that right. I'll just try dogs. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Apply changes and save. I know this is all really exciting stuff. Um, so then you can see there's the row of three images there. Let's do another thing you can do. Say I want to add an HTML block. You can drag these around and reorder them. Oops, no, I don't want it. There we go. So I'm going to do another little block of doggo ipsum, which is actually pretty big. So I want to make that a smaller one. And then for media embed, this is again where you can do your really big images. Um, puppies and sock hanging from a clothesline. That sounds good. Okay. And when you add this, you do have options here to change different sizes. 
Um, you can align left, right, or center. I'm gonna do center. You can also change what metadata is shown on the image on the front end. So I'm gonna click save. And then we can just take a look. There we go. And then let's say, lastly, I wanna add a document. So this is where I would use my universal viewer. Again, it's the same process for everything. Add attachment, walking the dog effect. I've considered getting a dog just so I'll walk more, but I was told that wasn't a good idea. <laughs> okay. And then click save. And you can go ahead and scroll down. And let's say I would have more text on this page, but that's just the essential of getting started. Another key thing to do is go to your navigation. So you might've noticed only the welcome and the cat is appearing here. So if I wanna add something to my navigation, I go down to the bottom and click it, add it here, click save. I can reorder these. Um, I can also nest pages underneath other pages. So we have sub pages. So I'll go ahead and click save. Um, make sure your resources, you've got the, your item set associated. You could also set user permissions. So let's say, you know, I don't want Anna to be able to do work on my site anymore. I'm gonna click save, or if I wanted to add somebody specifically to it, um, that's how you would do that there. And I think, and then the theme again, now you guys get to play around with our new default theme, which I am very excited about. Um, and I don't know if we have time to really get into all the fancy backend cool features that Leah has worked on for these, but it is in the libguide a little bit. So uh, if we have time, maybe we can go through that later, but I just wanna make sure people have time to um, try it out on their own and ask, ask us questions. So anything else? <laughs> is it, everyone still awake? <laughs> for sure. Okay. <laughs> That's good. So I think um, this is like sort of more like hands on time. And so everyone should have gotten um, a link to the libguide. Yeah, come lay down in your bed and uh, we'll keep our, our sleeping areas separate for a while. And um, I'll put some of these also in the chat so you can get to them. So Hold on just a second. And yeah, does anybody have any questions so far? Anna, I have a question people might have. So if if a te if someone at the University of Utah, a faculty member, a student wants to work with the Marriott Library, is anyone able to ask if they're a University of Utah affiliate? to have an Omeka site through the Marriott Library or what are the rules on that? Um, I don't know that there are specific rules. So I think they'd have a conversation with you if they're mm -hmm. you know, doing digital mattersy stuff or they'd have a conversation with Rachel if they're doing uh, digital library stuff um, just to kind of see what the nature of the project is um, and if they would want to, to partner with the library on that. Perfect. Thanks. I think David had his hand up too. Yeah, sorry if you've already covered this, but I was wondering uh, what is like the sweet spot in terms of size of uh, digital number of digital assets for, for an Omeka site? Like, is there theoretically, if you had, um, you know, a, a database with like, let's say thousands and thousands of assets, would that be something too big for Omeka to handle? They should go look. Um, I don't think that anything would necessarily be um, too big for it to handle. I uploaded 60,000 items into our instance of Omeka S for a, a project that Jeremy and I were working on, um, basically like metadata records, if that makes sense. Um, but uh, Century of Black Mormons, I would guess, has like thousands of items in its database. Um, so I think it, I think it really depends on the nature of the scholarship project and how you want to set it up. Um, you might have more of a desire for people to like browse documents, you know, or like interact with materials directly, or, um, 
you know, you might have more of a curated experience where you're embedding things um, into web pages. Also a plug to you for this lib guide that I've finished, but I can still add stuff to it, tweak things if you notice anything. Um, this is a really good step-by-step, -step, especially for the Marriott library users on how to do everything that I just sort of, you know, went through here. And there's also um, a link to the Night Lab has some really cool storytelling plugins essentially where you can create a timeline, you can do a story map. They have an, I think I feature just a couple here, but if you actually just look on their website, um, there's some pretty nifty things you can do with essentially just a Google Sheets um, template. And then you fill that out and you get the link and embed it into a page and it'll appear as, you know, like an interactive uh, feature on your exhibit. So this is something really cool that you can use free to kind of spruce up your exhibit and storytelling. Yeah, but if if people want to log into the training site and just experiment a little bit with uploading items um, and uh, setting up web pages, feel free to do that. And then we can be on hand to help um, with your with any questions that you have. Um, Hiroko is asking, is there something to keep in mind or precautions to be taken for uploading a personal image that you own? Um, I would say like same precautions that you would be if you were posting, you know, like an image of yours on the open web, like, you know, Facebook or, or anything like that, just that, once it's once it's out there on the internet, um, other people could snag it potentially. So, it's also specifically, um, you know, like an issue um, for folks who are interested in working with um, undergrads at the U because the materials that they create are their intellectual property. So, usually when we're doing a exhibit with um with anyone um from outside the library we have them uh, sign the library's permission to publish agreement which allows us to um publish their materials on the web i think crystal had a hand raised oh okay hi so this actually is related to um incorporating this into under undergraduate classrooms i have a couple of questions one is um if you have undergraduates who are working on one collective site would they create individual accounts and does it link on the back end for them to add pages to the one site you kind of showed that yeah it you can you can you can do it that way um so you can have um multiple users assigned to one website and they can all contribute to them i think with the women in stem exhibit like this is our our big example of a collaborative um undergraduate digital exhibit that uh rachel mason dentinger um worked on she's in the history department um to be honest i think that she found herself doing a lot of editing um after her students um initially worked on the exhibit and i think she had a group approach where um her students were working on specific themes together um so maybe one of them was really working on doing the mechanics of the page building in omeka and another one and another student might have been working more on the um, research or um, coming up with other materials, but I think it really depends on how you want to organize your class and you know that's something that we would be able to talk about. Um, you know if, if this is something that you are wanting to get into. Okay, and then I guess the other question I guess has to do with maybe it has to do with instructor description discretion, but I get I was wondering about recommendations on producing this and, and, and making it go live. Um, is it, is it <clears throat> when it comes to kind of sharing undergraduate work, I, I guess, like, 
you mentioned that you would recommend them doing a capstone project or something that's just scaffolded. Mm -hmm. Um, So there are options to, how do I, to publish it, but are there options to publish it without, I guess, putting it out on the web? Does that make so like, so one of the things <laughs> one of the things that I did um, for a block U class in the early stages of the pandemic, they were supposed to do a physical exhibit um, and that ended up not working out. Um, so I helped them create a digital exhibit um, but they they were not necessarily comfortable with all their work being on the open web. So it was sort of put up for a limited time period. And then um, one thing that we didn't go through when we were um, doing the demos um, is that you can, you can click on this little eye thing on the site to make it either visible or invisible. Um, so, so doing something and having it available for a very limited amount of time is an option or doing something and having it set for private is also an option. But again, I think with undergrads, just to make sure that they understand, um, you know, the implications of having their their work on the open web um, before getting into that as a class, um, you know, that's just something that you could have a conversation about and see what they feel like. David's asking if we can put a robots.txt on the site. Maybe, I don't think with the tiered sort of like big uh, collaborative structure of Omeka S that we could exclude it from one exhibit and not exclude it from others. I think we'd have to use that little eye icon to make it private or not private. Um, And that would be the solution to that. And I think Luke had a hand up too. Thank you. Yeah, my question is actually about the eye. So in the item set, for example, you can make an item set private. And who is that making it private to? Is that like, so other people who have access to our instance can't see my item set? Or does that mean that it won't get published? I think it's, you know, there are like six different tiers of users, user levels with Omeka. Um, And so I am not sure at what um, granular level, I think, it for sure, if the I is, is, uh, has a strike through it, um, the public or people who are not logged in to the Omeka site um, would not be able to see it. And then depending on how um, the Omeka administrator is setting up user levels and access to the site, um, usually um, if you're just developing one exhibit you're, you're the person that has access to it. You don't necessarily see your things going into a shared pool. Um, but um, Rachel and I have like access to everything. So like um, on the Marriott Library site, um, we see whatever any, anybody's putting in. Gotcha. So that you would just use that if you wanted to make sure that it wouldn't get published to the open web. Is that yeah. Right? Or, or yeah. you would do that? At the yeah, I, I tend level. to think of that. Yeah, and you can set you can set very granular levels of permission. So you can make an item invisible to the open web. You can make a page invisible to the open web, or you can make an entire website invisible to the open web. Um, so that's kind of crazy, but it's just um, <laughs> if you want to do that for a page that you're maybe drafting and you don't want people to stumble across it until it's done, that's a great way to do that. Um, it it can be a little nuts if you've like hidden 20 items and then you need to go back and click that button 20 times to, mm. to make it visible again. So just, just something to keep track of. Okay, thank you. Yeah. yeah great question. Sorry, I didn't touch on the eye. <laughs> um, yeah, that's public and unpublic. Mm-hmm. Just clicking that. Yeah, there's, I mean, we've really just kind of um, scratched the surface of this. So if you, if you do want to log in and work on creating some of your own pages, um, asking questions, you'll, everyone who's in this workshop will have um, access to the site um, for a week or so. And I can see that people are already creating their own sites. 
Um, so you can feel free to shoot Rachel and me an email um, if you have any specific questions too. Oh, Luke has his hand raised again. We have a, we have a live hand as well. Oh, no, live hand, sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. Go ahead, Luke. We, is that okay? Is it a follow-up to what you were asking? No, I just forgot to put it down. I just put it down. So. Okay. <laughs> okay, never mind. Go ahead. Uh, I had a question about using wall histories as items. Is there a way to link, like, say you had the audio file and the PDF transcript, mm -hmm. is there a good way to like link those two so they're connected if people are? Um, I'm gonna repeat the question so people can hear it okay. I was told that um, could be an issue. So the question is, um, in our in our digital library, we have oral histories, which often are usually PDFs, but now we're getting some audio files too, which is amazing. So how is how can we display both the audio and the media um, and make sure that they're linked together. I'm not at that. This is new territory. I mean, I know we can do the PDF and we should be able to do the audio files separately in terms of uploading them, but linking them together as like the same record, the way it displays in the digital library. I'm not that's some fancy uh, back end. Um, what do you think? I am Anna? also. I'm also not sure. So my response to that is that um, if you're if you're working on that and that's um, you know a project that you're partnering on with the library, we would kind of investigate and see um, how that might be possible. And I'm just going to show. Are you going to stop share? Oh no, you're fine. I'm just going to okay. put a link in the chat. Um, I think if I can find. Um, like a good example of like a little bit of a clip with um, an oral history, because we have done that a little bit. But um, and I think um, who is it who's working on the the Scott great Morris. stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Um, eventually, there will be an Did exhibit up. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> that's <what I> thought. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Sorry. I think um, one of the issues with the oral history too is that you know you could have two hours of audio and kind of like getting that quote, that exact you know excerpt yeah. is. So um, we've been clipping them to shorter. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think it'll be good for the user. I know it's a lot of work. Well, we also want for like researchers to have the full audio and transcript available. So you could around. link to it in the record to the full record, and they can get the full audio from the digital library. Yeah. It's an idea. Yeah, I guess that's true. I would. Do yeah, that. I think we do. We should talk about it. You know, yeah, definitely. you might be able to do something interesting with item sets. Um, you can you can also upload multiple items as part of an item, which is like kind of crazy. But you can have multiple photos in one item, so that might be a way to um, to keep things together. But whether or not that results in a user experience that's good for people. Um, I would experiment with that. Try and take one of your sound clips and throw a PDF in that same item in Omeka and see what it looks like. Like a universal viewer, maybe? Yeah. Try that, because you can do multiple. No, I don't think that would help, okay. but but uh, uh, let's let's talk we'll about it. Later. Okay, sorry, yeah. we don't want to get okay. Yeah, no worries. Getting some high high level uh, questions. Um, yeah, go ahead. Another complicated question. Is it, so you mentioned you can embed you know, like iframes and other things like video and audio but is it, can you also do like 3d imagery that kind of thing uh i don't know um the question is can we embed 3d imagery and i would say if you have a like a link we can definitely is it something that it would be a file that you upload or would it be a link to embed it can be either a link or an iframe kind of embed option or... yeah yeah, we should be able to yeah. definitely try it. Oh, we yeah, haven't done it, it yet. Yeah. Yeah. So see if it um, see if it works or not. I think it depends on what kind of um, web like browser based viewer you would need to have for that image file and whether or not um, Omeka would support that or not. Can you remind me how to add things again? Yeah, go ahead. Um, so thank you for asking because you know 
Um, in order to add, add things, you want to go to, you want to create an item set ideally first. So even if it is like test or whatever, create the item set and then go to items under resources and click add new item. And this is where you'll work through these first um, three tabs here on the left. So you'll select a media template, which we're using digital exhibits item, which is pretty common. You might have a customized metadata template, and this is where you'll put in the metadata for your item. And you can always go back and change this metadata. So let's say you're just like, I just need to get this image up. You know, you can do that on the fly with just sparse metadata. Go to your media file, upload a media file. Um, let's see, I have a bunch. Here's So I have just a title. I'm just going like really fast. Um, I've added the media file, the title, and then I'm going to add it to my item set and then click add. And then it should be in there. And you have, these are all from the Olive Woolly Bird, <laughs> most of them um, collection, which is pretty amazing if you want to just see a bunch of cute pictures of and ridiculous images of animals um, that were used in press uh, photos. I'm not really sure of their purpose, but. She wrote a lot of books. She did, Pro prolific writer, very interesting woman from Utah. Um, any questions or do you wanna show, should I do like an iframe in bed? Live demo. Who who want to know how to do that, or how are we on time? We're doing great because we had we had it allocated till two thirty. We don't have to use all the time, but we are okay on time right now. I think you should show it how to embed an iframe because that's really useful. Okay, so let's go to animals in the archive. I'm going to go to pages. Let's just do dogs again. Um, and I'm gonna do an HTML block. I'm gonna go to YouTube and grab a video. You can upload a media item. Like when you go to upload you know, an item, you can actually upload a YouTube video. But when you do that, you can't customize the size of the video as it displays. So I kind of like just doing the iframe. So, I'm going to go to YouTube and grab just wow anything you know what I'm gonna grab corgis I love corgis sounds good <laughs> okay and then Usually, like what's great about some websites will just give you um, the code to work from embed. So I'm going to copy this and go back to my HTML block. So I can't just copy and paste it in there. I have to make sure that I hit the source to get into the HTML mode. And that's kind of something you might forget. <laughs> and then click OK. And then you'll see a preview of it, you know, if it loads correctly. I'm going to click Save. You can see it down here. And then View. It's just really busy here. Um, and then you could do some sort of, if you wanted to, in the HTML code, change the height. You know, if I wanted this to be bigger, um, we could do that. Oh, that's really big. 700 pixel. I'm not sure what I'm doing here, but kind of get the idea, I hope. Um, and it looks like it's 
left the lining. I'm sure there's a way I can get it to center in HTML. I'm not going to attempt to look that up and figure it out. I don't think right now to see if it loads. Yeah, maybe I broke it. Oh, no, there we go. So you can kind of change the display um, in the iframe um, code. And I have a section on, let's see, where's my libguide about um, embedding other websites. So, you know, like if you wanted to embed an infographic, let's say, which would be really common, you know, here are the instructions on how to do that. Um, like for a map, for example, any sort of interactive um, data visualization tool that you're using, like Tableau Public is great. You can embed um, all kinds of features into your page. Um, save that. And when you do have, you know, quite a bit of blocks here, and let's say I wanted to add another HTML and then I wanted to move it, you will drag, you will need to like drag carefully. Um, so if I wanted to reorder some stuff, you know, I would just go like little bits by little bits here. Cause you can't, if you have a lot on your page, it can be a lot to drag around and you might end up uh, dragging an image into a text box by accident, but you can hit control Z and undo um, if you happen to do that by accident. Um, another common thing with HTML you might want to do is like do columns on your page, for example. Um, that's another thing that I have included in the libguide on how to do that. I think, I hope. which this is in no way exhaustive of what HTML can do. Um, but I know you all are really smart. So you could do a column this way. It'll appear like this if you wanted to add text there. Um, any questions or has anyone tried to make a site? I did. <laughs> Let me take a look at it. No. <laughs> I'm playing. It's called My Kids Practice Site. I just made a page for each of my kids with the photos I had the most accessible. Ah, I don't see it. Oh, I don't maybe it. I hit Let it. Let me see. Me. Maybe so refresh. URL slug is my kids. Huh. Did you make it on the main Marriott library? Oh, well, I'm going to delete it. Don't worry. But <laughs> yeah, it might be on the main. That's where I automatically log in. I think oh, you probably okay. did. That's OK. But I'll delete it. <laughs> so I've logged in and accessed the animals in the archive item set. But when uh -huh. I try to add media from it, nothing is showing up. Did you add the item set to your yes. site? Yes. You I did? Hmm. Okay, I'm going to come over and check it out. Sometimes with the item sets, it gets a little tricky yeah. because you can um, assign users who have access to the item sets, and then you can also assign um, sites that have access to the item sets as part of their resources. So it gets, it gets, sometimes a little bit tricky and granular in setting these things up, but usually it's just um, a little bit of finicky stuff at the start of a project, and then it's not too bad. Yeah, and does anyone have any questions um, who's joining from Zoom? You can feel free to um, put your questions in the chat or just, you know, unmute yourself and ask questions. I have a maybe comment slash question. Um, mm -hmm. 
this looks like it could work pretty well just with an iframe uh, for something like uh, photo spheres. Like if I had 360 photos that I just wanted to kind of pan around on, I think I would have to probably host like the navig like the panning navigation and stuff like that would have to be hosted, you know, in externally in that iframe. Um, but could I, I mean, I, or, or is that something that like, does it handle uh, like panoramic photos or 360 photos internally, or is that more of like a linking out to? Um, I honestly, we have not done that yet. So I would like upload it, see what happens, and then um, see if um, having it as an item in Omeka works, or if you'd need to do it with that um, kind of iframe, you know, external approach. Okay, cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hey Rachel, so, what do you do when photos go sideways? I have never seen that before. <laughs> oh, no. Um, let's go into your theme settings and let's make sure that you have. Let's do the Marriott Library default because that's the fancy. Okay. So, oh, Marnie's asking if you're interested in doing a library collections digital exhibit. How would you initiate a partnership with Rachel? What would the email partnership entail? Yeah. Yes, send Rachel an email. Send me an email, Marnie. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty um, easy. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's actually a lot of questions. I don't know why, but it, um, that's weird. So like my welcome page, this shows up when I click on it and none of that is in my... Um, so, and in terms okay. of... <laughs> so having I mean, a lot of strange things. Yeah, in terms of partnering with things, um, usually what we'll do is um, set you up with the site yeah, and we can we can consult with you individually. I'm just fully, um, you know, volunteering Rachel here, but um, but she would be able to meet with you individually about the needs for your specific site because sometimes, um, depending on the project, there there might be just um, you might want a different metadata template or you might need some different plugins or something. And um, Rachel can help facilitate those conversations. And once you kind of dive in and have access to a site, um, oh, I'm glad that Marnie likes the Dublin core, that's good. Um, once, you, once you dive in and have access to a site, um, it's usually not, um, not too bad in getting something um, up and running. And I'll, you know, if there's no questions and people are playing around too, I'll just touch on the new, um, the Marriott Library default theme that we have. So this is really fancy. Or um, Leah could talk about it. Leah's oh, Leah, here are you too. Here? I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead, Leah. <laughs> Leah, do you want to talk about your super cool theme? Sure. Um, well, the the main difference is that it just gives you some UI customization options, and then also just defaults to a lot of the kind of the standard look and feel of the library uh, exhibit sites. So you have the ability to say, change the navigation from being a, a horizontal on the top to being a vertical on the left. You can change link colors and background colors and fonts um, for your site. So, uh, I don't know, do you want, did you want to demo some of those? Sure, or? why don't I try to do that? Um, let's see. Um, it's hard to think of hexadecimal yeah, like color codes right off the top of your head. Yeah, give me like a, a code for sure. some colors Yeah, so the, the main you read is pound, and then CC0000. And then you can see on the right, here is how that color pops up. So that means like any link in my body of text will be that color. Yep. Um, and if I wanted to change, let's see here. Uh, what do you 
<laughs> the text color, I don't know. Uh, let's say I wanted to have a dark background and a light color font. This is where you could do some of that sort of customization. I think um, Anna showed a preview of the Youth Archivist um, exhibit, which I can maybe get to. I think they did that on their own before Leah came up with her really cool, awesome theme. Okay, I think I'm... so. Um, so there, there are ways you can get around with um, customizing sites, um, but the the theme that Leah made um, just makes it so much easier. And that, unfortunately, I think is something that's just available on the Marriott Libraries instance right. of Omeka. Um, it's not. It's not. Um, not available yet. available for anyone to use um yeah, but that so can sorry. that can really help if you want to um customize the look of your um digital exhibit it really makes it very easy to do that yeah like we can do a left nav bar um instead of the main top one but it's usually custom you know out of the box that's how they are background navigation like there's a lot of nifty you know features in here um in case you're you know wondering how you could do this for the marriott library users we do thanks to leah have a lot of options at our fingertips to play around with yeah i'm going to well, click save there and i can go and add a hyperlink to one of my pages and show you i don't know what this is i'm just going to grab a link and make it <laughs> um so to add a link, you would just highlight, you know, go to the, I think we're all kind of familiar with the little link feature there, paste it in. Um, I always recommend opening to a new window. That's my thing. Um, it just helps users when they start opening a bunch of resources to keep your exhibit site open. Let's go ahead and view that and make sure that the link, yep. See the That link looks like now. a Utah Red. Yep. Nice. <laughs> yeah. And I can go ahead and change if I wanted to um, edit theme settings again and go and uh, change some font. So let's say I want Montserrat, Montserrat, see what that looks like. And once I have one of these preview pages open, you can just refresh it. I have like, a, it'll just like keep opening up a million different tabs here. Um, but you can change background colors, pretty cool stuff, link colors. Um, you can do some font manipulation in HTML if you don't have this theme. Um, I can. Stop. Any questions or anything else I could demo? Yeah, we might be kind of reaching the end of this. I think um, everyone who's in the workshop, you should have Rachel's email, you should have my email. I'm sure you also have Rebecca's email. So as you're kind of like go off, um, feel free to um, experiment with the training site for around a week. And then um, if you're at the University of Utah and you want to um, get into digital exhibits, really um, feel free to get in touch with us and we can um, talk about what you're interested in doing. Anything else you would add, Rachel, or? No, we'd love to hear from you and get some more exhibits since we have yeah. you know, a new theme and a really cool presence with our digital exhibits. We'd love to, to do more. And that's okay, Rebecca, that I'm volunteering you if uh, Digital Matters <laughs> folks want uh, digital exhibits also. So absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah. This was so great. Thank you so yeah. much, Rachel and Anna. We appreciate it. Um, I just have one additional announcement that we do have DHU 6 coming up February 25th and 26th, and registration is still open. It's only $10, I think, for students and $30 for everyone else. I just added a link and there's a lot of digital matters people and friends of digital matters presenting so if you are you know I know a lot of people have been keeping an eye on case counts because it is an in person meeting. 
Um, but if you're comfortable going, it's February 25th and 26th, and I added that link in the chat. And other than that, thank you to our presenters. Can everyone join me in a Zoom? Yay! All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming today.